Hello, and welcome to Pick 6 Movies. I'm Bo Ranstell, one of your hosts, soon to be joined by my old friend Chad Cooper. What we like to do here on this podcast is we find a theme, and then we choose a bunch of movies around that theme. We organize those movies into what we call seasons, and as of right now, we've almost come to the conclusion of our 15th season, a collection of movies we're calling A Flop is Born. For this reason, we have selected a half dozen movies featuring singers and bands that were so popular, some idiot thought making a movie would be a good idea, forgetting that singing and dancing and being an actor are two very different talents. But in Grand Pick 6 fashion, we're going to whip a little information on you, and then I'll be back to dig into the movie and see what makes it so very, very bad. And conversely, what makes this podcast so very, very good. But enough jawing for me. Let's get on with the dark work before us. Welcome to Season 15, Episode 5 of Pick 6 Movies, from Justin to Kelly. Is that right? All right, and we are recording. All right, let's see. This is our first Pick 6 Movies Zoom call with, let's see, 7, 8, man, we got everybody on this call. Can everybody hear me? Great. Yep, I can hear all you as well. All right, we're good, we're good. All right, so as I mentioned in the email before, um, we got to come up with what we're going to do on episode five. We're recording episode four a little bit later today, and I got to tease episode five for this season, A Flop is Born, um, featuring all these movies with singers in them. And I realized that, look, a lot of you... Uh, who are working for pick six movies you're all you're younger than me and you all have a real variety of musical taste so I wanted to solicit ideas from each of you uh, to sort of to get an idea of movies that we could feature as my third pick for this season so um, let's hear it don't be shy who who came prepared with a movie to pitch yes Diane what you got Well, I don't really know who Mandy Moore is, but I'm guessing she's a singer. However, I do know A Walk to Remember is a Nicholas Sparks novel upon which that movie is based. And Bo has a no Sparks rule for pick six movies because he is a romantic at heart and he will most likely cry during the review part of that movie. And if you haven't seen Bo cry, it's not a pretty picture. Steven, hands up. What about you? The Bodyguard is a very good choice, but I believe that the tragic life of Whitney Houston would be a difficult transition into the normal stupidity that we bring to each of the movies we review. (laughs) To clarify, Stephen, it was her husband, Bobby Brown, who admitted on the VH1 reality TV show, Being Bobby Brown, that he once dug a dookie bubble out of Whitney Houston's butt as an act of love. And again, I think that that was probably caused by her drug abuse. The dookie bubble part is funny. Her ODing and dying is not. Who's next? Cherie, what do you got? Glitter. Again, excellent choice. I like the pseudo-autobiographical narrative of Mariah Carey's life. Did any of her husbands happen to dig a dookie bubble out of her butt? Well, you know, that would have sealed the deal if that had been the case. But anybody else? Anybody else? Purple Rain, starring Prince, another pseudo-autobiographical life story, but it's Prince, and again, kind of difficult to make that transition into the stupidity of our reviews because it's Prince. What was that, Paul? Did you mean to say Academy Award winner Eminem in the film 8 Mile? Well, the answer is no, because Eminem wouldn't let Weird Al do a parody of the music video for Weird Al's song Couch Potato based on the song Lose Yourself. So, a next? Look, Amy, that is a perfect choice. And we all know that reviewing the Britney Spears motion picture Crossroads would be hilarious. But hasn't she suffered enough? Look, team, all of these are great suggestions. They just all include stories of people who are dead from tragic lives or still living tragic lives, or they slided Weird Al Yankovic, stupid Eminem. Isn't there a movie out there that stars some pop singers that are not dead or addicted to drugs and alcohol 
and the movie is completely ill-conceived. I mean, like a total train wreck. And it's only in it for the cash to capitalize on a flash in the pan of popularity based on music that will immediately be forgotten, you know, in just a few weeks. Michelle, I see you raising your hand somewhat reluctantly. Do you have a movie you'd like to suggest? Wait, what, what, wait, what did you say? From Justin to Kelly? The American Idol movie from 2003? The movie that Eric Bragston from the Los Angeles Times called a big screen bobblehead of Fox TV phenomenon American Idol? The movie that Stephen Holden from the New York Times called the motion picture equivalent of Cheese Whiz? The film that Entertainment Weekly's Owen Gleiberman described as Grease, the next generation, acted out by the food court staff at SeaWorld? That from Justin to Kelly. Sanjay, what's the current Rotten Tomatoes rating on this little gem? 10%? Ladies and gentlemen, we found our episode five. Let the introduction begin. Tonight, Major Bose is going to tell you about this wonderful new car. And it's a real event because, as you will soon see, never before has such an extraordinary value been offered at low price. Meanwhile, our gifted amateurs are ready to entertain you and to entrust their success to you and to your votes. In tonight's honor city, Mansfield, telephone Maine 9900. In New York, call Murray Hill 89933. Or if you prefer, vote by mail from your home or in your dealer showroom, addressing Chrysler Corporation in care of your own station. And now, here is Major Bose. Thank you, Ralph. Good evening, friends. On this opening day of autumn, we spin our weekly Wheel of Fortune for the 236th consecutive time. Around, around she goes, and where she stops, nobody knows. talent shows as national entertainment, we got to go back to the year 1934 and turn on our radios and give a listen to the original Amateur Hour, hosted by the show's creator, Major Edward Bose. Now, here is the format of the original Amateur Hour. Here each week, Bose would ramble on with contestants who had been selected among a nationwide talent search that were performed in major cities. They all traveled to New York to sing and dance and play music. They would tell jokes and even do ventriloquism on the radio, anything that would put them on the path to the big time. Contestants on the show would tell their life stories to Bose up until the exact moment that they would perform their talent. This is where the suspense kicked in, because at any moment, the sound of a gong could be heard as the the host of the show could end their performance at any time and crush their hopes and dreams right in front of them. Contestants were selected each week as Major Edward Bose would spin a wheel and we would hear him say, Around, around she goes and where she stops, nobody knows. People listened to these talented, starry-eyed hopefuls, and then they would vote on who was the most talented. These votes were collected via telephone calls and also by letters that people wrote in voicing their selection on who was the most talented. Contestants who won three times would earn cash prizes and scholarships or be part of a traveling stage show associated with the program. Now, the radio show was sponsored by Chrysler Automobile and was mentioned all the time during the show. Let's see, lots of self-proclaimed talented people seeking fame and fortune, voting by phone, corporate sponsorships, and a live tour featuring the winners. You know what? There's nothing new under the sun. And heck, even that statement's ripped off from the Bible. Major Bose hosted the show until he died in 1946, where the show's hosting duties were taken over by Ted Mack, who worked on the show selecting the talent, and he produced and even directed the show. As radios gave way to television, so too did the Ted Mack original Amateur Hour. The show hit the small screen in 1948 and bounced around to NBC, and then a little later it was on ABC and then CBS, producing a staggering 1,651 episodes, where it ended its run in the year 1970, making it 
get the longest running variety program in the history of broadcast television. And it was consistently ranked high in the ratings. Now keep in mind, there were only three channels back then, but still, that's a heck of a run. The original Amateur Hour had a lengthy list of incredibly talented performers who first appeared on this show. Joey Bishop, Jack Carter, Robert Blake, Alan King, Red Fox, Connie Francis, and a skinny 21-year-old from New Jersey who was the lead singer of the Hoboken Four, better known as Frank Sinatra. Maybe you uh, heard of him? There was a 16-year-old Ann Margaret Olson from Wilmot, Illinois. She made her television debut on the Ted Mack Amateur Hour, but she lost to a man who could play a tree holding it between his fingers. Comedian Robert Klein, who you may remember, appeared on the dais of the Mike Douglas show when KISS made their TV debut. Mr. Klein appeared with a singing group called the Teen Tones, but their group lost to a one-armed piano player. R&B singer and songwriter and actress Gladys Knight appeared when she was just seven years old. And Louis Wolcott, the man who would later become bow tie enthusiast Reverend Louis Farrakhan, he appeared in 1949 playing a violin. Now, despite the novelty of the tree whistle guy and the one-armed piano player, not everybody who auditioned for the show made it to the airway. Elvis Presley, star of Stay Away Joe, he auditioned, he didn't make it. A nine-year-old Wayne Newton was told no thank you. And the ukulele stylings of one tiny Tim were given a next time maybe. Of the more than 10,000 amateurs that appeared on the show, about 500 became professional entertainers. But I guess that kind of depends on how you define professional entertainer. The Ted Mack original Amateur Hour was consistently must-see TV for over 25 years. And by the time the show ended its run, there were all kinds of copycat programs ripping off everything from its format to its catchphrase to its spinning wheel and even the gong that let contestants know, you know what, kid? You just ain't got it. From Hollywood, almost live, it's the Gong Show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, here's your host and the star of our show, the incurably outrageous Mr. Chuck Berry. On June 14th in 1976, the National Broadcast Company debuted a variety talent show unlike anything that anyone had seen before. The Gong Show was hosted by its creator, Chuck Paris. And I'm not sure how to explain this show if you've never seen it. It's, if I had to describe it in one word, that word would be bizarre. Chuck Barris was an executive producer on the hit TV game shows, The Dating Game and The Newlywed Game, two programs that were entertaining because you got to laugh at people as they embarrassed themselves. Barris took that element of embarrassment as entertainment, and he blended it with the idea of a talent show. But not a talent show for people with real talent, a talent show for people with questionable levels of talent. And each episode of the show followed a distinct format. Each group of entertainers had two minutes to perform unless one of the three celebrity judges got up and struck a large gong, mercifully ending the performance. Sometimes every act on the show was gonged by the celebrity judge and no contestant won the show's prize. Contestants who performed for the full two minutes were judged on a scale of one to 10 for a possible score of 30 points. The act with the highest score at the end of the show won a golden gong trophy and a check for $516.32. Chuck Barris was originally just the show's producer, but he took over hosting duties when the original host, John Barber, didn't care for the show's satire of traditional talent shows. That and the completely bonkers acts that were invited to perform. Chuck Barris, the host of the show, he had a hostess who accompanied him on the show, and this was originally filled by Swedish-born model Siv Aber, then later actress Marlena Clark, then porn star Carol Connors, then finally Chuck Barris' own teenage daughter Della was his co-host. There was a live band to provide music when needed, there was a show announcer, and it all kind of looked legit, except when it came to the performers. Barris wanted the show to be chaotic nonsense, full of oddballs. The show's original producer, Chris Beard, wanted more scripted content, but Barris felt differently, so Beard quit, leaving Barris in charge. 
When you watch episodes of The Gong Show, it's easy to assume that Barris is drunk or high on cocaine or other available recreational drugs. Now, nobody on the Pick 6 Movies research team was able to find any evidence of Chuck Barris being high out of his mind during the recording of the TV show's episodes. And in contrast, we actually found instances of Chuck Barris claiming that he wasn't drunk or on drugs during the filming of any of these episodes because that was not allowed by the production company behind the show. You know, Chuck Barris Productions. <laughs> Let's talk about the unadulterated madness of the show's performances. The Gong Show featured acts like the Unknown Comic, a hacky Las Vegas mainstay who told terrible jokes with a paper bag over his head with holes cut out for his eyes and his mouth. Alan Katz was another act. He was the professional burper. People would play wooden spoons with their hands. They did terrible impressions. There was Gene Gene the Dancing Machine, who was just a stagehand that walked out on the stage every so often and shuffled around while random objects like balloons and toilet paper and hats and towels and beach balls and stuffed animals Animals were chunked at him by people who were off camera. One episode was full of every single performer singing the song Feelings. <laughs> Coming through the lunacy of the show, there were all kinds of people showing up to partake in the silliness before they went on to real legit fame. Steve Martin, Paul Rubens, aka Pee Wee Herman, uh, the star of USA Network's Up All Night with Rhonda, Rhonda Shear, she came out on stage and performed a contortionist act better suited for a stage with a pole on it. Coach of the Baltimore Ravens, Brian Billick, appeared on stage wearing a monkey costume. Michael Winslow from the Police Academy movies, he appeared on stage stage and did that thing where he makes beep bop boot noises and guns go off and police sirens. And who would sit through this kind of nonsense? Well, the judges on the show were exactly who you'd expect them to be. Artie Johnson, Jamie Farr, Anson Williams, aka Potsy, Rex Reed, Rip Taylor, Phyllis Diller, and the duo of Waylon Flowers and Madam. And each episode had to run a gauntlet to get past the censors to be aired. So Chuck Barris did what any good creative type does when it comes to getting past censors. He would include a whole bunch of acts that were bait to be cut from the show so that he could get less questionable acts on TV because they looked tame by comparison. However, one of these bait acts made it to the censors and the airwaves of TV. Well, it aired on the East Coast at least. Now what happened next was unlike anything ever seen on network television. <laughs> One of the girls in this next act says her hobbies are boys and first aid. I guess that means that on weekends, she cruises Hollywood Boulevard in an ambulance. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mark. <laughs> Here she is. Oh, I love this act. Oh, now this has some substance. It's about time we had substance on this show of fame. Here comes Have You Got a Nickel? <laughs> Two young girls come out on the stage, sit down with crossed legs, and each one is holding a thick, long orange popsicle. Whereupon they proceed to lick their popsicles in a manner closely resembling, well, a blowjob. think of have you got a nickel uh, I don't understand it all together <laughs> a zero that's a disgrace nobody has ever gotten a zero Jamie Farr I don't think they give a lick a <laughs> JP Morgan do you know that that's the way I started <laughs> see that two three a 10. I give you a 12. <laughs>
<laughs> that last voice giving them a 10 was J.P. Morgan, uh, famous for her song Life is Just a Bowl of Cherries. And eventually she was fired from the gong show when she flashed her breasts at everyone during one of Gene Jean the Dancing Machine's performances. Yeah, that happened on the gong show. And guess what? It happened at 12.30 in the afternoon when housewives, young children, and the unemployable are sitting around watching TV. <laughs> the Gong Show ran for two years over on NBC, then two more years in syndication before it was canceled. On the finale, Chuck Barris performed as a contestant, singing his version of the song Take This Job and Shove It, where he ended it by giving the camera and the executives who fired him the middle finger. The Gong Show was truly bananas. I mean, it was popular, sort of. And one other thing, they made a feature film based on it. The Gong Show movie hit theaters in 1980, you know, when The Empire Strikes Back and The Shining both came out. The movie was a fictional day in the life of Chuck Barris while working on The Gong Show, and it was full of the exact kind of insanity you'd expect. At one point in the movie, a guy blows a candle out with his asshole, and they included the full frontal version of J.P. Morgan showing her bare breasts. The movie wasn't well received by the critics. Cigar enthusiast and portrayer of the Lord Almighty George Burns said of the film after seeing it that for the first time in 65 years I wanted to get out of show business and you know what that's kind of a big deal I mean not that part about George Burns leaving show business it's a big deal that a TV talent show could somehow inspire a movie that made its way into theaters <laughs> After the cancellation of The Gong Show, TV talent shows continued to be resurrected in different formats in the United States and around the globe. But it wasn't until the 1980s in the United States that Star Search hit the airways and turned out to be the most popular TV talent show since, well, since anything before it. It was hosted by former Johnny Carson sidekick Ed McMahon and was incredibly popular. And it really had a parade of people that were future megastars that appeared on the show's stage, including Beyonce, Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, Usher, Drew Carey, Dave Chappelle, Alanis Morissette, Leanne Rimes, just to name a few. Star Search mixed up the talent show formula just a little bit. They actually created categories for each contestant to compete in that was also divided up by age and gender. Uh, vocal groups or dance groups, stand-up comedians, that sort of thing. Winners got $100,000, but they did not have any sort of extended entertainment contract. The show ran for 12 seasons from 1983 until 1995, and it was consistently high in the ratings, but eventually it was canceled. And much like the Gong Show was revived a few years later in 2003, as it tried and failed to compete against another TV talent show. <laughs> American Idol was the U.S. TV singing talent show based on a U.K. singing talent show called Pop Idol that was based on the New Zealand TV singing talent show called Pop Stars. Remember, there ain't nothing new under the sun. Now, the U.K. version did change it up a little bit. They introduced the three celebrity judges kind of like the gong show, as well as the interaction of having the viewing audience vote by telephone, you know, like they did over in the original Amateur Hour. The UK version, Pop Idol, also introduced the backstories of contestants to create drama between the performers and give the viewing audience more to become emotionally invested in, aside from the contestants' singing talent. One of the original Pop Idol judges was Simon Cow, who was a TV personality and music producer at the time. Based on the success of Pop Idol, the show decided to come to America and see if it could make it in the big leagues. Producers pitched the show and every network fought to be the one to get it on air first. I'm kidding. Nobody wanted it because they thought it sounded like garbage. Except for the Fox Network, which was owned by Rupert Murdoch, whose daughter was a fan of Pop Idol in the UK and convinced her dad, the owner of the network, to put it on TV. Holy shit. Because the U.S. has four time zones, the voting by phone couldn't be tabulated instantly by the end of the show, so an extra half-hour show was added for the next day to hear the results to allow coast-to-coast -coast voting. 
originally contestants had to be no younger than 16 and no older than 24, but over time, the age limit was lowered to 15 and bumped up to 28. You had to be a resident of the United States and no previous record contract. And later it was a rule that contestants couldn't try out for the show if they had advanced to a certain level in previous seasons. Auditions were held in major cities across the US, a select few were chosen to go to Hollywood where the final cut was made and the contestants would then compete. Contestants would sing alone, sometimes in groups. They would sing with a band or a cappella, depending upon the theme each week. The show just cobbled together pieces of all these other successful shows and that was it. Let's put this thing on the air in the United States. The show was renamed American Idol, The Search for a Superstar, and it hit the small screens nationwide in the summer of 2002. You know, summer, when there's nothing ever debuted on TV because people don't watch TV in the summer because they're outside. Or do they? The show was a hit and it grew in popularity, so they moved later seasons to start in January to capitalize on people being stuck in their homes during winter. You know, when people are indoors watching TV. The contestant backstories, the voting by phone, and the three judges all made the show a huge hit. Acclaimed studio musician Randy Jackson was brought in to give the show some credibility. Former MC Scat Cat dance partner and Forever Your Girl, Paula Abdul, was added to bring in a female voice as well as a perspective of a real pop singer. And Simon Cowell was included to be the asshole judge. The show originally had two hosts. Pete Best impersonator Brian Dunkelman, who quit the show after season two, and Ryan Seacrest, who currently hosts New Year's Rockin' Eve, Live with Kelly and Ryan, some radio show, and he's also the one to blame for the Kardashians actually being a thing. So let's talk about this first season of American Idol. We got Seacrest and Dunkelman hosting, we got Jackson and Paula and Simon as our judges, and we got our 30 or so contestants who wanna make it to the big time. As the contest progresses, one guy got booted because he lied about his age. One contestant actually was hospitalized due to chest pains during the competition, but she got voted off. One contestant came out as being gay during the first season, but producers told him to take that down because, hey man, it's 2002. There was some high drama when audience favorite Tamri Gray was eliminated from the top four. I know, remember that? <laughs> and then the whole thing came down to just two people, Justin Gorini and Kelly Clarkson. Now, everybody knows who won the first season of American Idol. It was Kelly Clarkson. But during the whole competition, she really wasn't an early favorite. I mean, she was good, but she didn't blow them away week after week, but she stuck with it. And with performances of the song Natural Woman and stuff like that, she took home the title of American Idol's inaugural season. Now, what did Justin Guarini do during his final performance on the show? I have no idea. He didn't win. And if it wasn't for Pick 6 movies, I doubt that I would even know the name Justin Guarini. No offense to Mr. Guarini. I'm sure he's certainly a very talented guy. But hey, second place, that's first loser. With the success of the first season, the people over at the Fox Network decided to fast track a movie into production starring Kelly Clarkson and what's his name? Kim Fuller, fresh off her success as the screenwriter of Spice World, the Spice Girls movie. Oh, shit. Well, she was asked to write the script. Robert Iscove, who directed the teenage rom-com, She's All That, and he directed a bunch of other stuff you never heard of. He was asked to come to sit in the director's chair to help get this movie in theaters as quick as possible. See, the season finale of American Idol's first season was in September of 2002, and the American Idol movie, From Justin to Kelly, hit theaters in June of 2003, just nine months later. When the movie came out, theater chains threatened to not carry the film at all because Fox was going to rush the movie to the home video video market with DVDs and VHS tapes about two months after it hit the big screen. So the theater chains complained and they're like, all right, all right, we'll push it out a few more months and we'll make everybody happy. Well, everybody was happy except for those people that actually saw the movie, which was not a whole lot. Because if we crunch the numbers, the movie cost 12 million bucks to make and it grossed about $5 million, which if my math's correct, that adds up to a big stinking bomb. But everybody kind of knew the movie was going to be terrible before it even hit theaters, heck, before it even went in production. Reportedly, Kelly Clarkson asked to get out of the contractual obligation to do a movie before cameras started rolling. But hey, a contract's a contract, sweetheart. Welcome to show business. Kelly Clarkson, years later, said she knew the movie was going to be a turd when she read the script, but hey, she couldn't get out of it. And IMDb currently ranks from Justin to Kelly as the ninth worst movie of all time, right between number eight, Birdemic, Shock and Terror. Note to self, watch Birdemic, Shock and Terror. And number 10, 
Going Overboard, starring Adam Sandler. Note to self, do not watch Going Overboard, starring Adam Sandler. The American Idol movie didn't do anything to squash Kelly Clarkson's career. She's gone on to much greater things, including multiple hit albums. She's got a TV talk show. She's on commercials, pitching products. And I'm sure that other guy's doing some good stuff too somewhere. American Idol was a ratings juggernaut, destroying everything in its path for decades. But you know what? Much like its predecessors, it ran out of steam and it got canceled. And then it was revived over on another network because audiences love to see you regular old schmoes like you and me get up on stage and sing and dance or do stunts or tell jokes or bake a cake in an attempt to show the world the innate talents that have been bestowed upon us by our creator. Whether those talents include smashing eggs on your head, flashing your bare breast, or heck, even sucking off a popsicle and pigtails. So you know what? Without any more delay, let's get Mr. Bo Ransdell in here to break down the American Idol movie one scene at a time and one song at a time to see if we have what it takes to win the love and the affection of you, our listening audience, filled mostly with total strangers we will never meet. Ladies and gentlemen, Seacrests and Dunkelmen, I give you 2003s from Justin to Kelly, the American Idol movie. Welcome to Pick 6 Movies. I am Chad Cooper and I am joined, as always, by my pitch-perfect triple threat man with the singing voice of an angel, Mr. Bo Ransdell. Bo, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing so well. <laughs> you know, I want to prove your point. I don't want that to go unanswered because no. people out there may be thinking to themselves, oh, is this some sort of joke? Does Bo really have a bad singing voice? I just want to point out, no, 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 truly the voice of an angel. And that angel... Lucifer. I need to start off this episode with a correction. Yes. Last week, I teased the feature film for episode five as when Justin met Kelly. And we received so much email uh -huh. informing me that the movie is actually called From Justin to Kelly. And when we make a mistake on pick six movies, we own up to them or just pretend that they never happened. And I just want to clear the record. We are aware of that. So please stop sending us email. We are good. Which leads to my first question. Why is this movie called From Justin to Kelly? I think they just leave off to the toilet. <laughs> Wouldn't it make more sense if it was called When Justin Met Kelly? It's a better title. It plays on When Harry Met Sally. It's familiar. Mm -hmm. From Justin to Kelly implies that he's, what, writing her a letter, sending her a gift, giving her a little VD? Maybe the text messages he sends are from Justin to Kelly, if you wanted to stretch. It's never paid off. No, no, no. Having seen the title, and in anticipation of how the movie might end, I thought that it would end with him writing her a letter and you know signing it with from justin to kelly or something like that but this movie does nothing right and everything wrong it's quite bad yeah i will argue it is far from the worst movie we've seen this season and i'm hoping that you can convince me otherwise well i don't know that i can convince you i know in my heart of hearts that this is an irredeemable piece of shit it's the shortest movie we've seen this season and that gives it extra points in my book yeah and also you don't have to take notes when there's a bunch of idiots dancing around and that's nice it's kind of like a poorly choreographed car chase scene in an action film that don't really matter it's just filler the stakes could not be lower in this movie <laughs> that's one thing that i will hand it to the creators of from justin to kelly and speaking of that name like we went through an entire season of those bond movies where the, you know the titles are just utter bullshit uh -huh. and those at least paid off more in the films themselves than the title of this so as much as i dislike bond movies this is still worse 
It's 81 minutes, Bo. How is that even a movie? Well, I think that is the MPAA definition of a movie is 81 minutes. Your introduction did a fine job of explaining how a movie like this happens. But when you're watching it, it's still hard not to ask the question, how did this happen? Did you ever watch American Idol? No, I got a season or two of The Voice somewhere along the way on Hulu or something uh-huh. at, at some point. But no, I am i don't like reality television as a rule, so I never watched American Idol. I've never seen an episode of American Idol. You never voted for anybody then? Jesus Christ, no. I voted a lot for Sanjaya in 2007, who was a terrible singer, and I contributed as a participant of a campaign that was led by Howard Stern to turn this singing competition into a farce and propel someone who clearly should not win into first place. Because, Bo, you know my motto, which is si non potest, essay Paris, solutionist ace Paris problema. If you can't be part of the solution, be part of the problem. Yeah, I, your tattoo is big, <laughs> but it's irrefutable. <laughs> It's on the Cooper coat of arms. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ultimately, I would think would just be a lot of condescending looks. Just people all looking at each other with derision <laughs> from every, like that Brady Bunch angle. <laughs> only everybody has a slightly sarcastic look. A lot of fist smacking into palms. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sure. And, may, and maybe one cuckoo bird. Let's go ahead and jump into this. Okay. The sooner we yeah, start. Yeah, sure. Let's get this 81 minutes over with. That's right. The sooner we start, the sooner we finish. So our movie starts off. <laughs> And we don't waste any time getting to see Kelly Clarkson do what she does best, which is singing. And she can also magically appear in the home of racially and sexually diverse households to sell affordable and fashionable furniture and home accessories from Wayfair.com. Oh, good for her. You remember when Wayfair was singled out by the QAnon crazies and they said that they were involved in a child sex trafficking ring? I know the child sex trafficking ring. I did not realize that Wayfair was was somehow a part of this but i guess we all are anyone who is a registered democrat is somehow (laughs) contributing to those listeners who may say to themselves you're a democrat you must be involved with children trafficking i counter i don't give a shit about children enough to traffic them We see Miss Kelly Clarkson, and she is in a dive bar in Texas. I'm guessing this was inferred by the oversized, draped American flag hanging from the wall behind the band. There is an abundance of plaid shirts from the musical performers, lots of cowboy hats. There's a giant mounted steer head on the wall behind the band. It's all standard issue Texas dive bar movie set accoutrements, Bo. Elwood Blues is cracking a whip. (laughs) Kelly Clark, she's singing on stage quite well, I might add. She deserved to win the first season of American Idol. She has a fantastic voice. And in the audience is one lone fellow Texan by the name of Luke, who applauds enthusiastically when Kelly Clarkson ends her song. She's somewhat defeated because there's only one guy there with a, thank you, thank you, you're too kind. And it appears that we are past last call and everyone has left the Boar's Nest Bar and Grill to go sleep it off somewhere except for luke who is just like hey kel you're on fire tonight will you marry me i mean you want to go on a date i mean i want to hold your hand i mean can i get your phone number oh oh my gosh i'm so nervous around you kelly clarkson and this is where she makes it clear she is both uninterested in luke as a romantic partner and also uninterested in conveying emotion in this film oh yeah she is like you said wonderful voice she has the dead eyes of a puppet yeah and it happens all through the movie there there are scenes of her like singing these big emotional songs and stuff never reaches her eyes chad Uh -uh. it's like ted bundy it stops just below the nose (laughs) it's a real something like her performance makes it to nose level and no further everything above that is just welcome clarice are the lambs still screaming (laughs) She looks at Luke and she says, Now, Luke, I appreciate you coming to every show. And you don't pass out until I'm off stage. But I am not interested in you romantically. By the way, anyone listening, if you regularly go to a bar and find yourself passing out from alcohol consumption, please seek professional help. And if you find yourself passing out at home from alcohol consumption, well, welcome to the COVID-19 pandemic drunk a thought Y'all ready for this? <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> 
Luke looks at her and he says, look, you may not be interested in me yet, but I'm Hurricane Luke. Pretty soon I'm going to blow you over. Or is it blow you away? I always get those two confused. While she's making good decisions about not hooking up with Luke, Uh in walk her two friends, Kaya and Alexa. Alexa is her blonde haired white friend. Yes. And Kaya is her dark haired black friend friend right and alexa is played by katherine bayless who went on to appear on the tv show one tree hill never saw an episode of that bow and <laughs> not where she played erica marsh but kaya is played by anika nani rose who went on to play laurel robinson in dream girls with jennifer hudson and beyonce and she was also the voice of tiana who is the first black disney princess in the princess and the frog so this movie started a real career for her she's easily the best actor in the film there i don't think anyone's even close (laughs) like everyone else in this movie is dreadful and i don't think she's great in this because the material is just so bad right but she has moments where you're like my (laughs) god she is trying she's (laughs) acting it, it's r- refreshing when you see it. So it's closing time at our bar and Alexa and Kaya show up and Kelly Clarkson sees her two friends and she says, well, I'll be hornswoggled. What are you two doing here? Aren't you two supposed to be off in spring break in Florida? And Kaya says, um, our charter airline went bankrupt and all the other flights were booked. And then Alexa chimes in. Yeah, little old me had an idea. Instead of flying, maybe we could just drive to Florida for spring break. But then little Little Kaya reminded me that we don't have a little old car and that little old you do. So we came here to see if little old you wouldn't want to go with little old us to little old spring break, Kelly Clarkson. And she does not want to go. She is like, guys are gross there. I don't want to have anything to do with them. And then she looks over and her alcoholic would-be boyfriend luke is just belching into the emptiness of the room (laughs) and she's like you know what i guess i'm gonna go after all kaya is the one who ultimately is like oh you are gonna have so much fun you need to come this is it it is spring break off we go chad are they in college i think so they can't be high school i mean a high school student can't work in a bar legally yeah it's gotta be college before she agrees her two friends say if you don't agree to go with us we will kill you yeah i forgot about that it seems like a pretty empty threat that's how they do things in texas bo you go big or you go homicide you know alexa (laughs) is so proudly a villain in this movie i wouldn't put it past her like i think kaya is probably kid like i would never really kill you but i think alexa would be like oh i put a little old ice pick right in your little old ear (laughs) on our way to spring break there are a number of needle drops in in this movie and this is maybe the most offensive of them are you talking about the opening credits yes which is a completely lifeless version of the song vacation by the go-go's which is a great song it's insufferable one of the most slap in the face terrible covers i've ever heard it's right up there with like disturbed sound of silence in terms of like this was a bad idea from jump they drive from texas to florida in a late model yellow convertible jeep yeah that trip had to just be a nightmare i mean you're talking over a thousand miles of just loud rumbling like you can't hear the radio you can't sleep hell you can barely talk to one another you know maybe that's for the best because i have a lot of questions about why these girls are friends in the first place like kaya and kelly i get they both seem like they're on the same wavelength they're both kind of small town girls trying to do their own thing they they seem friendly alexa i have no idea what's going on with this character i've got 23 little old bikinis and i'm gonna be down there for seven little old days that's three bikinis for every day with a couple left over in case i little old shit my little old pants i mean she's got the ethics of ursula the sea witch <laughs> just dropped into the middle of this field to cause chaos <laughs> and it would be great if the character were just that it would be fun but it she waffles too much but they make their way across the 
panhandle in this shitty truck. And we cut to our main guy characters. Yeah. Justin Gorini. Yeah. And his two pals, Brandon the party boy Uh and Eddie the nerd. Right. And you don't need to know who played them because they didn't do anything after this movie that you would recognize. Rightly so. They should have been (laughs) driven out of the industry. So Eddie is a nerd who's been cyber chatting, as he puts it, with some girl that he met on the internet and he's supposed to hook up with her on spring break. That is his through line through the film is I want to meet this internet hookup that I've got going on. I've been talking with these really hot chicks on the internet. They're really cute babes. It's what I do. You know, (laughs) I really love tech technology i love it more than biology the problem with eddie is that he's presented as a nerd but doesn't know anything about nerd stuff no he's a psych major right i mean i made that part up but that's kind of what he does he's all sensitive and feeling and helps people work through their emotional problems right but he doesn't know shit about computers which is evident from like the second scene of this movie anyway brandon and justin run a business called like jmb promotions yeah well when we meet them they're walking down the beach and brandon says hey i hope this spring break's better than last year i barely recovered from that one and justin who again his acting is only upstaged by that of kelly clarkson justin says oh neither have the 400 women who are running off at the mouth about you my friend brandon i'm not sure that brandon our party boy is implying that he had sex with a lot of women when he was on spring break last year or he's just an asshole and these women are trash talking him i'm not sure what this is implying i think they mean the former but it's probably the latter there's what brandon says and what's the truth Brandon is wanting to run their promotion scam with what he calls, hey, you guys are my Pennsylvania posse. So one assumes, A, they are from Pennsylvania, Mm -hmm. and B, that this crew is somehow running together, and this faces the same problem as our trio of girls, which is, I totally see Brandon and Justin. Where the fuck does Eddie fit into this? He doesn't. I mean, I think it was written in 90 minutes. It's just terrible. Chad, let me introduce you to a film called El, A Modern Cinderella Tale. That is a movie written by yours truly that aired on such fine streaming services as Your Stars, or perhaps an Epics or two. And as I was watching this movie, I was really thinking about that because I like I had that job Uh of how do you write a basically a shitty kids movie and I think I did a better job you couldn't have done a worse job yeah I at least snuck a Highlander line into it Brandon tells his buddies hey these clubs want us to promote parties during this movie and I've lined up the hottest DJs and I've planned a whipped cream bikini contest judged by none other than the Pennsylvania Posse I'm like, wait a minute. You're going to have a whipped cream bikini contest? That doesn't make any sense at all. Because the movie's rated PG, and any bikini Uh whipped cream contest involves spraying whipped cream all over naked ladies, and then boobies ensue. This movie is horny as hell. Like, it may be PG, but this movie is down to fuck. It just doesn't have the rating to get away with it, but it is. Every scene in this movie is about one to five. Why would you hire the Pennsylvania Posse to promote your parties and clubs in Miami or Fort Lauderdale or wherever we are? Why would you hire local? They know the market. If you're looking to sling some cheesesteak sandwiches or some Amish apple butter, you might go after some group called the Pennsylvania Posse, but not to promote spring break in South Florida. They don't know how to get any cocaine. They don't have the connections, Bo. Absolutely not. I think the only reason that they're in charge is the same reason that the Corleone family was getting money from the local grocers. They just rolled up and like, hey, be a shame if something happened to your party here. How about uh, me and my buddy Justin? We uh, take over, you know, we'll print out some colored flyers, different. Hey, look, it's going to be a different colored fly for every party. That's the kind of professionalism we bring to these things. And if we were to say no, what would happen? Well, let's just say it'd be a shame if, say, somebody let loose a bunch of cockfighting roosters in the middle of your party. Huh? Because it wasn't being properly promoted. People didn't know not to release (laughs) cockfighting roosters in your party. We take care of that, and we only do it 
for 10%. That's a friends and family rate that I'm giving you because you, you will like family to me. When Eddie the nerd hears that he's going to be a judge at a whipped cream bikini contest, he goes, guys, you're going to have to count me out. I'm lactose intolerant. Plus, I'm here to meet the babes I met on the internet in the nerd chat room on the nerd internet, guys. Do you think you're going to be eating the whipped cream? You know what, Eddie? You're, you're such an inconsequential character to this movie. Just run off and do your thing. Brad is like, hey, look, I'm glad that guy's gone because, look, I got to tell you, Justin, I am so excited about how much I can't commit to a woman. Oh, my God, this week I am going to be such a misogynist. <laughs> I am genuinely excited about this. Well, of course you are, Brandon. You can't imagine staying with the same girl for one whole day let alone a whole year. Eddie pops back into our movie and he says, you know, you're emotionally incapable of connecting with a woman and beyond having a physical relationship. And then Brandon turns to Eddie and he's like, yo, you keep it simple. Dinner, chat, coffee, party, shower, cops, bribe, cab, regret, crying, more regret, more crying, another shower, eat some leftovers, more regret, light journaling, 18 hour nap, rinse and repeat. Am I right, boys? Up top. I don't know what you're saying, but I like to high five. <laughs> and Eddie is the one who's like, wait a second. I don't understand this coffee in the shower thing. And I was like, you know what? I'm with Eddie on this. I don't know what the fuck Brandon's talking about either. I guess... It's the same thing as, like, should I wake you or call you for breakfast? I don't know. It's just Brandon being horny as he is all through this movie. We cut to the yellow convertible Jeep pulling up as our three female Texas spring breakers hop out next to the beachside hotel where they will be staying. And Alexa immediately says, leave your little old bags in the back of that little old Jeep. We got to go hit the beach like little old right now. So all these three run toward the beach later to return to find that all of their luggage has been stolen from the back of their fully exposed vehicle. Assuming that the Jeep is still there, left where they parked it on the side of the road, most likely it will be stolen, towed, or a combination of both. Anything that isn't stolen has been vomited on by random spring breakers who catch a, a little bit too much sun off the glare of this yellow Jeep. We get to the beach and it's full of spring breakers, none of which is holding an alcoholic beverage. There is not one beer bottle or red Solo cup in sight. It is total bullshit yes but this is also the point where a bunch of people just randomly start singing dude this movie blindsides you and becomes a full-on musical when that happened chad i thought about you i had the voice of robert redford in my head <laughs> saying all is lost <laughs> see it brought me so much joy because i thought bo hates this he hates this so much i can't <laughs> <laughs> a quick rundown of things that Bo doesn't really enjoy. Uh -huh. Musicals. Yep. Movies about teenagers in love. Right. And also movies about spring break. Well, this is all three of those things. Oh. Oh. Uh-huh. So this is where we ran smack dab into problem number three, because the first two had already presented themselves. As soon as I realized this was going to be people singing to each other like a bunch of idiots. Also singing, you know, let's add a PS on the, the list of things Bo doesn't like. One of those things is just love songs in general. Uh -huh. It's the least interesting thing you can write a song about. Sure. Because there are eight million of them. Write a song about something interesting. Write about a flood like Nick Cave does you know but this isn't even a competent musical because the musical numbers in most competent musicals work to progress the plot or to provide opportunities to gain greater insight into the characters as a means of musical monologue now one right. musical that i know that you did enjoy watching was the goofy movie yes which does and i'll tell you i did really enjoy uh not only a goofy movie <laughs> but uh hamilton which i saw recently uh not as good as a goofy movie right because of the lack of sasquatches even the muppet movie i uh -huh. i would argue is a musical 
Absolutely it is, yes. But every song in that movie has purpose and either progresses the plot or gives you more depth of character. This movie does none of that. Every song (laughs) is just vapid and pointless. It's like, I love you, baby. I think I'm gonna maybe, should I go to college? Or who's that over there? I think it, somebody, it's a cactus. Like That's way more detail as far as what's going on in the movie than the songs reflect because it's just meant to be like a a top 40 kind of song and it doesn't propel the movie forward what propels the movie forward is that as they're singing and dancing around you see justin and kelly see each other and then kind of dance together and sing together a little bit Uh and it's like oh they want to fuck because (laughs) once again everybody in this movie wants to fuck but she's singing about how she's a good girl and shit and then he gets tugged away by another lady as they're singing and dancing and then chad the one uh not a legitimate laugh because the movie i don't think realized how funny this was okay but as the song wraps up everybody's just like oh uh, are we done oh okay Uh, yay everybody good good job gang good good job on the singing and dance like everybody (laughs) just kind of mills around looking at each other like well that was something did you think we were all gonna dance like that I didn't think we were going to do that. I I think the rules of musicals are bent in a different way. So I'm okay with everybody just suddenly starting to sing and dance. Don't get me wrong. I don't enjoy it. But I get that this is the genre that we're dealing with. But yeah, in this one, everyone just kind of stops. And then Brandon, our party boy, goes over to Eddie the Nerd and gives him some pointers on how to pick up chicks with a little freestyle rapping with this just inane love guru advice that is ultimately punctuated with Brandon pulling down his pants and flashing his ass at Kelly Clarkson, Alexa, and Kaya. Do they all scream in disgust? He asks her, like, as he pulls up his pants, he turns around and is like, hey, Alexa, what are you doing later? And she says, like, nothing with little old you. You're a nasty bad wiper. You got thick brown shit up both sides of your little old cheeks, you funky, nasty dickhead. The actual line, Chad, is pretty much that. She says, trying to get that image out of my little old head. You've ruined spring break for me because the first thing I saw was some dude's hairy asshole. <laughs> It's like going into a Burger King bathroom and finding some homeless guy washing his dick in the sink. You're like, whoa, I just came in here for a biscuit. About this time, a female beach patrol officer comes over and asks for Brandon's ID, and she ends up giving him a ticket for showing his asshole on the beach. Brandon tries to talk his way out of it by saying she has beautiful eyes, but his smooth talking doesn't work, and it turns out he's going to owe 75 bucks for showing his butthole to people next to the the ocean yeah and a lifetime of telling his neighbors that he's moving in yeah that's right that's exposure y'all <laughs> we cut to a hotel where our three male leads are being shown to their room by the hotel manager who's this crusty old guy who tells them there's no smoking no drinking no loud music and no girls and i'm like what if they're gay oh or then i was like well then i was like well maybe this is a real progressive hotel that only caters to non-binary sexual orientations good for this crusty old hotel manager the fire island motor lodge (laughs) this is where they land it's a reverse threes company like no straight couples allowed (laughs) maybe he puts cameras in the rooms and he wants to record some hot guy on guy action that's what he's like no girls allowed it's like psycho but with cameras in the rooms and i my dead mom's not back at my house she's in the trunk of my car and i like gay sex instead of mother the blood the blood i yell mother the cum the cum <laughs> gross wait 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 he can't say i'm the gross one there's <laughs> a long tail on that kite i was just the last rung these three young men go into their room and we get to see eddie the nerd struggle with opening a rollaway bed for some real comedic hilarity then we head over to the girls room where they're talking about all the cute boys that they were singing and dancing with during this impromptu number on the beach earlier and kaya tells kelly clarkson that guy with the curly hair justin he was totally checking you out you should hook up with him i'll bet he's got a great big dick (laughs) yeah 
one quick detail I'd like to point out here. In the previous scene, we see Eddie rolling out this trundle bed that he's going to be sleeping on. Uh huh. Kelly's just getting the chair, man. There's no extra bed. Maybe she sleeps with Kaya, I guess. Uh, yeah, you know, head to toe. Sure. Well, you know, it's different for girls. It yet. is. Yeah, for guys head to toe, you're like, well, our dicks might still touch, and that guy's got cameras in here, and, you know, sure, I'm a little curious, but... If I sleep with a guy, it, it is strictly penis-to-mouth position. <laughs> That's how I do it. It's how it's, I've always done it. And I've slept with guys up to five of us that way. And it's quite a human centipede that you can form. <laughs> but more importantly, Chad, is I like the fact that from jump in this movie, Alexa is just like, you know what? You just need to get a little old big dick in you. You, Kelly, and you're gonna find that you're gonna have a, a lot more fun. Look what little old me got. It's a, a little old BR and J invitation. They only throw the hottest parties on the little old East Coast. And again, BR and J stands for Brandon, that's the BR, and Justin mm -hmm. is the J. Which at first I thought, mm -hmm. do you think they were called like BJ Productions, which attracted the wrong crowd? So they're like, well, how about B and J Productions? But that was a little suggestive. So they're like, all right, just how about B, R, and J? All right. Yeah, but they booked the room as BJ Productions because that got them the special rate. <laughs> There's three of you in the room? Yeah, you got it. I'll take 25% off the top. Sign this non-disclosure agreement. You sleep in penis to mouth, right? Because I got the cameras. One rule. When you take a shower, it's got to be all threes of yous. All right? <laughs> it's to save on water. Wink, wink. <laughs> Speaking of, we cut back to the guys in their room where Justin is like, boy, that Kelly I met, she sure is something. Don't you gentlemen think so? And well, Betty doesn't know her name. And Brandon's like, hey, look, you get obsessed with one girl. You're going to forget about all that misogyny that you could be doing like I am. Or you're going to end up like Cyber Boy over here. Look at this sad piece of shit. Look, guys, I got to totally meet this hot babe I'm chatted with in the internet. Help me figure this out. I don't know how to put he, this plug in to get on the high speed internet. Chet, he's trying. Th this is my problem. He's a nerd character trying to plug a Cat5 cable into a rotary phone. And everybody knows that's an HR45, Chad. Not a Cat5 or even a graduated Cat6. You might as well have a <laughs> copper twisted pair in there. You got to have plenum run for this thing to work. I know, Bo. I know. Just they don't pay attention to the details. They don't care. Uh, it just drives me crazy. We cut back to our three women in our movie, and they're leaving to go to the beach. And Kaya and Alexa are wearing bikinis. Kelly Clarkson is wearing white pants and a sleeveless t-shirt because she's more modest. And they're talking about Kelly Clarkson meeting Justin earlier and how they're going to go to the hottest parties and meet the hottest guys. So then we cut to this other outdoor party where there's some guy breakdancing on a small stage. Then we get another musical number where Justin is wandering around this crowded outdoor bar area looking for kelly and kelly is wandering around looking for justin none of this really matters no and as that wraps up brandon is uh, talking to a girl who's in line to get a bunch of wristbands for this other party that is being thrown uh-huh the girl is like it's okay if my boyfriend comes and he's like hey how about you don't worry about your boyfriend at all you know how about you just worry about brandon why don't you give me a little kisser on the cheek why don't you give me a little kisser on the chin? Why don't you give me a little kisser on the chest? Now on my <laughs> belly. <laughs> And then, of course, the boyfriend is behind him, and I think it's the lead singer from Smash Mouth, but I can't be sure. It's like Bam Bam Bigelow's younger brother. And so Brandon and Eddie are like, <laughs> Brandon just runs off because he's a pervert and a coward. Let's have at best low expectations for brandon but why did they write a movie where the winner of american idol and the runner-up from american idol fall in love did audiences want to see these two hook up romantically i thought that's what had happened i thought they had dated somewhere in real life and that's why this movie was a thing i think they were just contestants and then this sort of happened this is some shit that like karina longworth is gonna cover in about 15 years where she's and then on american American Idol, Justin was paired with Kelly. The studios forced them to date. Do you think 
If this movie had been a success, they might have made a rom-com where Ruben Stuttered and Clay Aiken would fall in love. I would love that. You could set the whole movie in the hotel room where that guy, wink, wink, anonymously films all that porno. Yeah. You could, you could make it with puppets and it could be a sequel to uh, Charlie Kaufman's <laughs> Animal Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> here's what i want i like this idea of, of clay aiken and ruben stoddard and i want to throw into the mix let's recast the alexa character with CeeLo green <laughs> and so every time somebody is like hey alex because we'll change his name to alex for the the gender swap right hey alex did you orchestrate this whole cockamamie romantic scheme he can be like i just want to say fuck you and then just dances out of the movie it'd be the best thing that ever it'd happened. be better than this well it would be good at least they take off and then justin he's sipping a drink and this brunette and pigtails comes over and is like justin you gotta pick me on the list for the margarita madness party and justin says well you know the rules first come first serve unless of course you have one of these wristbands and then justin gives her a wristband and off she goes happily with the knowledge that she's going to get blackout drunk before sundown but then alexa approaches justin and says hello little you i'm little alexa well hello human would you like a wristband to go to a party you know what i don't want just little old one little old wristband i'm gonna take the whole bunch out of your little old back pocket yoink and she does she snatches them all yeah right. and then she immediately turns around trips over her own feet lands face first in the sand that is full of beer bottle caps and cigarette butts and used condoms and she's like oh i've got semen in my mouth that one was for you buddy <laughs> And then Thanks. the vultures fly in, snatch all the wristbands, and leave her wristband less. Yeah, it's a real... <laughs> Justin gets real spooked, and he runs into a ladies' room where he finds Kelly Clarkson, who is washing her hands after taking a massive road trip shit. You know the kind of shit I'm talking about? It's just like, right. it's a parfait of gas station consumables, Arby's, and warm beer. With a solid eight hours of compacting it. <laughs> Justin says, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, what is that smell? And Kelly Clarkson says, well... That's just four beef and cheddars and 12 Red Bulls. And then from the other stall, you hear Zoe Deschanel saying, Oh, uh, that's just me. I'm here on spring break, too. <laughs> Kelly Clarkson says, You know, we met on the beach earlier when everybody started singing and dancing. My friends call me Kelly for short, but my full name is Kelly Nanifer Alley in Steenabeth. Wow, that is a long name. I'm going to have a tough time remembering that. I hope it's okay if I just call you Kelly. Ah, that sounds just great. What's your name, young feller? Why, my name is Justin. As in, I'm just in this bathroom to look for an escape route. I enjoy hiding in places where females are at their most vulnerable states. The bathroom sleeping showering to her credit kelly clarkson is like well hey did you hear about that asshole that was handing out all those red flyers why yes it's funny you say that uh, because i have something i should tell you well before you tell me that why'd you come in here well you see outside there's a group of women wanting to rip my clothes off they probably all want to have sex with me because i host parties here on the beach but i've said too much I've said too much. Well, I can help you out. Every bathroom has a secret door. Like that one right there. I know, I've seen Harry Potter. No, not that one. It's that window there, and you can sneak on out. You can really smell the cheddar cheese from that Arby's you ate. And a little of the horsey sauce, I find, if you let it get in your nostrils. I detect notes of horsey sauce. It's quite intoxicating. I mean, nauseating. When I was a young girl, they called me a horse girl, and I wasn't sure what that meant for a long time. Justin's eyes start to water, and he eventually agrees to climb out the window to escape the screaming women that are outside the bathroom door. He falls out, lands on the ground, and then Kelly Clarkson, she is smitten by Justin and his ability to decipher her shit stink elements. So she takes out her lipstick and she writes her phone number on a paper towel. She tosses it out the window to Justin, but the paper towel lands in a puddle and the numbers get smudged. He doesn't ever think to just yell out, wait there, before you leave the bathroom... <laughs> This note got... Uh oh 
I see. When you're done, I will. Oh, it's 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 really going. I'm such a child. That makes me so happy. How is there a curly fry still in it? It's still seasoned. <laughs> Zoe Deschanel reaches down low to give her a, a low five. Row, row, look at you. Usually it's me clogging up the toilet. Row. Low five, <laughs> sister. Welcome to club number two. Row, row. I call it the mild down club. <laughs> <laughs> row, row. <laughs> We cut to the B plot of our movie <laughs> where Kaya is drinking some blue beach cocktail. She spills a little bit on herself and then the handsome Carlos appears out of nowhere and he says, excuse me, senorita, may I help you? And Kaya says, oh my God, I, I was just falling in love with your muscles and your chiseled Latin features. Look, uh, I know this is crazy, but maybe you want to go somewhere or do something. And then an anemic Brian Doyle Murray. <laughs> Who is his boss? Appears from nowhere. It's just like, hey, you, Carlos, not paying you to stand around and gawk at the ladies. Get to cleaning. I pay you to pick up dirty glasses and not to wipe blue, <laughs> blue martinis off ladies' tits. All right, get back to work. And also, it, it should be noted, Carlos is clearly the busboy at this outdoor bar, and he looks to be about 30 years old. There have been some unfortunate circumstances and or bad decisions made. Multiple divorces. He's got kids. How many? I don't know. Oh, at least two. I'm not saying it's not more than that. I'm saying it's <laughs> minimum two. Justin runs into Alexa. She's kind of holding court on some kind of outdoor love seat. It's, it's some sort of resort outdoor bed. And she's just hanging yeah. out there. Justin wanders along, and when he sees her, she's like, oh, look at that. There's that little old Justin Kelly likes. I bet he's got a big little old dick. She asks him, are you looking for little old me? And Justin says, actually, I was looking for one of your friends that I ran into in the bathroom. She's the one who apparently eats lots of Arby's. Do you know the one about which I speak? Lilo Kelly? Why'd you want to hook up with her? She she ain't never done nothing. I've been around the Lilo world. You know what? I think she went back to the Lilo hotel room. She ran off screaming, I've got the meats. She doesn't like the Lilo party. <laughs> you know what I'd Lilo mean? Party. <laughs> Yes, I understand what you mean, but nonetheless, I wondered if you might provide me with the numbers to her telephone. I would like to call or perhaps message her. Justin, you're the little old mayor of Little old Spring Break, and she is one little old bonnet shy of being little old Amish. And did I little old mention that my thighs are little old open for little old business, and business is little old good? Here's little old Kelly's number. You can give her a little old call. Speaking of the Amish, the movie Witness was quite good good mm -hmm. i believe kelly mcgillis was nominated for an oscar say is this the right number oh it's definitely the little old right number i would never give you the little old wrong number whoever you text it is definitely gonna be little old kelly who responds to you and not someone else playing a little old trick your excessive explanation has reassured me thank you and also, he never calls her. He only texts her. This movie would have been solved a million different ways, if what? not for the screenplay and the stupidity of the characters involved. One phone call. That's it. Or just one sentence right. from one of the characters once there's a whiff that something is out of place. Alexa gives Justin her phone number. Because she's a real Iago, this puppet master of relationships, poisoning the <laughs> yeah. well of true love during spring break in Miami. From hell's heart, I spit it, <laughs> Kelly. This is the whole movie from here on, folks. It is this dumbass Three's Company episode <laughs> where Alexa is going to pose periodically as Kelly on her phone to try to fuck things up. Right. Justin immediately texts Alexa thinking that it's Kelly. It's like, you know, five. All right. Beep. Five. Beep. Five. Beep. <laughs> this will be easy to remember. What's the next number? Oh, my. Five. Beep. So he punches it all in and he sends her a text that says, hi there. It's me, Justin, the one who smelled your shit in the bathroom. Would you like to go get a hamburger? 
to make more shit. And then Alexa <laughs> sends him a text back that says, little old sorry, little old not interested. Sincerely, little old Kelly. And she does this while she's with Kelly and Alexa because her phone beep bop boops. And they're like, who's texting you? And she's like, oh, it's little old no one. So she's fucking things up for Kelly and Justin. Yes. We cut over to Justin who's getting shit from Brandon. Hey, how come you passed up on that hot blonde, huh? How come you didn't get all up on that shit? You know what I'm saying? You see this girly over in a hot tub? I'm about to go hit that shit, Justin. Oh, bye! I may join you later. I'm going to text Kelly one more time to see if she might want to go and have some sort of hamburger with me. Ho, ho, ho! Are those things real? Can I touch them? <laughs> ah! Rape! Rape! Oh, Officer Cutler, how much is that gonna cost me? <laughs> it's the next day, and the girls yeah. are heading to the beach. Kelly is concerned that she hasn't heard from Justin, even though Kelly gave Justin her number, what, 12 hours before? But this is spring break time. Yeah. Alexa tells Kelly, well, you should just forget little old Justin. You need to go find some other little old guy. And then Kelly tells uh, Kaya, I don't know why Alexa even cares. Justin isn't her type. Kaya says, just because you like him, that's what makes him her type. She's a terrible person kelly like i spend a lot of time with her and she is a horrible person you should probably go find this justin guy because i think he's probably got a huge fat hog cock in his pants and you just need to ride on that cut to brandon who is now handing out flyers for this whipped cream contest on the beach hey show off your tits and i'll cover them with whipped cream and take off your your bikini bottoms and your panties and i'll cover up your your vagina and your ass crack with more whipped cream and you could win a thousand dollars baby i'll make your dreams come true and if you want to dial up the creep factor on this character a little bit this is the scene for you because he runs into these two uh attractive blonde ladies uh -huh, they look like the ants of all the other people in this movie yeah and he says do my eyes deceive me are these two sisters right here how about you both in a maybe you make out a little bit on stage huh kind of sexy what do you think cheryl should we enter the contest <sighs> All right. Do we get extra points if we can both put our feet behind our heads? Brandon is the kind of guy that would have been one of the creative forces behind the bang bus. Yeah, he's a real entrepreneur in that way. Whatever is going to get it wet and turn a buck, that's what Brandon is into. We cut back to the B-plot of our movie, where it's either just before sunrise or just after sunset, and Kaya approaches the Latin heartthrob in removal of empties, Carlos, and he's stacking up chairs outside this tiki bar and carlos sees her and he says look senorita i work all the time it would not be a good idea for us to walk on the beach in the romantic moonlight holding hands feeling the beat of our hearts slowing together becoming one as we anticipate who will be the first to express their feelings in words or actions and kaya says oh my god you've got to have at least one night off look i'm in town for five more days okay how big is your dick it doesn't matter i have never had sex with a guy from wherever it is that you are from this is going to happen and carlos is like excellent Meet me outside at 8 o'clock. I need to arrange for a sitter. I am also taking some night classes, so I need to tell my group I will be unable to assist them. You do what but you gotta do. And then he looks at her and he says, Let me ask you a question, mysterious woman. Do you feel adventurous? I'm about to pass out right now. I'm prepared for anything. If you need mouth to mouth, I am going to school to be an EMT. I think it is a good way for me to provide for my children. You know what? I'm going to ignore that you have kids. And if you are going to be an EMT, you can practice anything you want on me. Mouth to mouth, those heart compressions where you touch my chest. If you want, you can pretend that I'm having a baby and just get all in there. I don't care. It is spring break. After we leave our B plot, which the, the most useless story, like if the A plot is low stakes, the B plot is even less stakes than that. Well, wait till the C plot and D plot show up a little later. Oh God. Anyway, so cut to that night. We're going to stick with our B plot a little longer. Yeah. We're in the warehouse district. District. He leads her to a building that is nothing but just corrugated tin on an oceanside dock. <laughs> it's like a, and, it's over in District Nine. And 
<laughs> yeah, and they open the door, and it's like the dun, fucking dun, dun, TARDIS, dun, 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 where inside dun, 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 it's just rich colors and a band's playing on a stage, dun, 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 and you can almost dun, smell how dun, 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 delicious the food is there. Dun, 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 and as as soon as they go in and the band is, is playing and people are dancing, I'm like, oh, I see where this is headed. And once more, Robert Redford appears in my, my consciousness to say, boom. All is lost. Oh, Kaya, please, you have to come dance with me. It is spring break after all, and I have to be home early. It turns out Antonio needs me to read him a bedtime story. So let us dance. Like, I don't know how to do this kind of three, four, five, and then she's totally down with all the moves. Stuff that would take yes. weeks of choreography to learn how to pull this off. She picks it up. Just like that. As if this wasn't bad enough, Chad. Then she starts singing about it. And this is textbook insult to injury. Finally, the movie doesn't even know how to end this scene. So they just fade out of it. The laziest dissolve in film history. We cut to the next day where our three male leads are sitting at the bar. They're drinking juice and they're eating breakfast, lunch. Brandon, the party boy, he's eating a club sandwich. And I was like, damn, I got at least one thing in common with Brandon because I loves me a good club sandwich. Yeah, also, it's a tiki bar early at the morning, which I think this is day three, if my math is right on this. Yep. Justin is once more, three days into it, just like, boy, fellas, I sure wish I could find that Kelly again. I'm going to ask her out one more time. Let me grab my Nokia phone. What was her number again? Let's see. Five. Beep. Five. Beep. It's easy to remember, boys. Five. Beep. You're not going to believe what comes next. Another five. I knew a girl with that number. <laughs> she liked to ride on my motorbike. <laughs> We cut over to our three female leads, and Kaya is regaling Alexa and Kelly about her evening with Carlos. Kelly Clarkson says, you know what? Maybe I should take a chance, put myself out there, open up my legs to new things, like Alexa over here. And then Alexa's phone goes off, and it's Justin texting, meet me at the marina at four. I won't take no for an answer. Bo, that sounds like a threat to me. That's some shit that gets you locked up today. <laughs> you, can't, you can't text that to somebody. That you met two days ago? Yeah, I mean, this is textbook cyber stalking, if you want to get down to it. At this point, Alexa is like, little Kelly, you want to go to a little party and have yourself a good time for once? Well, that sounds great, Alexa. What are you thinking? Why don't you just come with me? All right. They go to the whipped cream party, the whipped cream bikini contest. Somehow or another, Alexa enters Kelly into this. What? You entered me into a whipped cream bikini contest? This is degrading. It is humiliating. Concern it, I just won't do it. And they just shove her on stage. And she turns around and there's Justin who is like, Oh, I did not expect to see you here at this contest that I promote. What? You're here too? Why, you're one of those filthy misogynists that I was talking about in the bathroom. You've been hiding the whole time. You're nothing but a double crossing, frazzing, frazzing snake in the ground. And to think, I'd let you smell my... Arby shit. Why, that was delicious. I want to encourage you, Kelly, to cut loose. I'd like to offer you some of this whipped cream, but in a playful, splashy fashion. If you put that whipped cream on me, I'm going to smack you right in your fat man face with it. Here it comes. And here it comes back at you. Curse splat. And she, after pieing him in the face with whipped cream, uh -huh. just takes off and it creates a minor whipped cream fight that doesn't go on nearly long enough. At first, Justin seems to show a little bit of remorse for what he's done, but then he immediately just fills up his hands with whipped cream and starts slapping slapping the chest of Brandon and he's just like whoa hey what do you say we go back up to the hotel room and wash this off in the shower the guy said he'd shave off one night's lodging for us I'll text Eddie and let him know that it's shower time I just want to point out Kelly Clarkson is really pissed off by the misogyny of all of this and yes. Justin doesn't back away from it I mean he just really leans into it and but there's no way that you come back from this moment in a movie like this she has stood her ground saying 
I am a woman. This is degrading. I want no part of it. Whereas he turns around and starts squirting more whipped cream on the tits of ladies on stage. He is team whipped cream bikini contest. Kelly Clarkson is team ovaries before broveries. They're not going to get back together and suddenly reconcile and fall in love. He's a piece of shit and she knows it. And he really never apologizes for it. The closest he ever comes is later in the movie when he's like, that was a decision I made to start that business a long time ago. He doesn't apologize. He just justifies it or tries to justify it. Yes, you're right. It's a justification, not an apology. But anyway, so she storms off down the beach and Alexa chases after her and she's playing innocent where she's like, oh, Kelly, I didn't know that little Justin was a judge in that little contest. I just don't get it. He was so nice and funny when I met him in the stank bathroom at that dive bar. You know what? I'm going to go back to the hotel. I think I have a little bit of that Jamocha shake still floating around in there somewhere. And Alexa says, Justin just needs a girl who's, you know, a little more his speed. And you're just, you know, a little old slow. Yeah, he needs somebody who's a little bit double jointed in her little old hips like little old me. You just scatter along. I called the front desk and asked them for a little old extra four or five little old rolls of toilet paper for you, little old Kelly Clarkson. Thank you. Yeah, I like how there is just a constant recognition that Alexa is just a slut. Yeah. That everyone knows that she has no depth. Her, in quotes, friends know it. Everybody just assumes that she is out to get laid. Nothing else. No, you know, no more, no less. But nobody has sex in this movie. Yeah, it's, again, for a PG film that doesn't show anything, everything is about fucking. Enter our C plot of the movie where Eddie the nerd <laughs> oh, right. is meeting the other female nerd that he met on the internet. And he's on the beach and he's waiting for And then he gets invited to join a volleyball game where he immediately gets hit in the face with the ball and he gets knocked out and the camera pans over to this woman that he's supposed to be meeting who is not a stereotypical nerdy lady she's a lovely young woman with curly hair and she's just looking around for eddie and she has a photo of him so she knows what he looks like and she's comparing it to the passerbys in that scene it's a running gag through the movie of the these misconnections between the two of them kelly meanwhile is getting a burger because you know she's eating her feelings a little bit we've all been there from a food truck Bo. oh yeah, yeah yeah and she orders it to go do you understand how food trucks work yeah i've never gotten dine in at a food truck like hey can i honk the horn while i eat (laughs) this is a delicious fettuccine (laughs) do these corn dogs come with dijon mustard too (laughs) you know what i need some extra napkins they're in the glove box thank you (laughs) you can stop anytime with the horn you said i could justin saddles up behind kelly who's still pissed off at him and she's like bait it loser i'm gonna eat this giant hamburger my shitter's not full and justin says kelly wait all the contestants the parties the hotties the hand jobs behind dumpsters the three ways with anonymous female and male partners it's all part of a business i started a long time ago maybe one or two years ago you must understand kelly i come down each year from pennsylvania i'm part of the pennsylvania posse perhaps you've heard of us anyway i come down here and throw these parties with my friends it helps me make money to pay for my housing and my books. And yes, before you ask, I'm not in school. And when I say my books, that's short for my bookies. Zoe Deschanel strolls by, peppers, some jalapenos on that burger of Kelly's. (laughs) Hey, girlfriend. This guy sounds like trouble. (laughs) Justin looks at Kelly and he says, how can I make it up to you? I know. What if I force a whole bottle of hot sauce onto your sandwich? Whoops. Apparently I've dumped it all over your sarong. Oh no. Let me help you clean that up. Before we do that, are we still on for the marina today at four where I won't take no for an answer? I'm going to leave now, Kelly. Goodbye. As he walks away, Kelly says, still on for the marina. Why, that's the first time he's ever mentioned it to me. Best keep that to myself. Cut over to, I guess, the D plot of this movie, which is Brandon being confronted in the aftermath of the bikini contest by the sexy officer Cutler. He's like, hey, look, there are no problems here. I got people cleaning up the beach. We're going to have it just like we found it. Officer Cutler says, well, that's wonderful. You took care of everything right down to the permit. You do have a permit, don't you? 
It's so bad, Chad. He also says he made $750, but there was a $1,000 prize for the bikini contest. Like, did people pay money to enter? I think it's net. I think he netted $750. Yeah, but right. what was the gross? Where did that money come from? There wasn't an entry fee. And if there was, there were only nine people in it. What were people paying $150 or two to $200 to get up there to enter a bikini contest? The business model of this is shaky at best. It's a real Bernie Madoff kind of situation situation yeah, and fully supplemented by ecstasy and molly <laughs> you know it is you just get a bunch of people together and sell them drugs the real business is what's happening while the party is going on gotcha justin and kelly go to a marina where they take a boat out onto the water yeah and did he rent it did he steal it i assume it's stolen right. i like the fact that kim fuller is like you know what sure i used a boat trip in spice world but it worked then it sure is <laughs> hell gonna work now and so justin takes kelly out onto the water where he sings to her about how much he wants to fuck her and she sings about how she's thinking about fucking him yeah even though he's he represents everything she finds detestable in men here's what one of the things I hate most in musicals, especially bad musicals like this, uh -huh. where in the middle of the song, they just start chit-chatting a little bit. So, do you take girls out here all the time? The ones I don't want to be found. Sometimes I come out here to think, not to bring girls. Well, what are y'all thinking about right now? Why, I'm just thinking how happy I am. You gave me a second chance. And so let's finish the song, and then they kick back into it. I'm actually wondering how many people will return on this boat. Will it be two? Will it be one? It might be zero. It really all depends on your answers to a number of questions I'm about to ask. They ride off into the sunset after this awful song. We cut over to the kitchen of the Tiki Bar where Carlos, our world-class dishwasher, is doing <laughs> what he does best. And uh, Kaya's just hanging around. She's dressed up for another night on the town. And then Carlos's boss, the anemic Brian Doyle Murray, he walks through the kitchen and he says, Carlos, I need you for the dinner shift tonight. Kaya just interrupts and she's like, um, no, he can't. He's got plans with me and my vagina. Anemic Brian Doyle Murray says, ah, I see. Carlos, you're fired. Does the old switcheroo where he does the, all right, I see your point. Carlos, you can take tonight off. And Kaya's like, thank you. He goes, as a matter of fact, take every night off. You're fired. <laughs> Meanwhile, Carlos, who has said nothing the entire time, he has been... What the fuck? <laughs> right. <laughs> asked to work and fired all in the space of like eight seconds, and he said not a word. I was going to be getting double time. Do you know how much I make here an hour? Five dollars, ten cents. That would have been ten dollars... More than ten dollars an hour. You've ruined it for me. I'm in the early days of those night classes. My math class got up to 10, but that's as far as it's gone. You know what? Get out of my life. I've got to go talk to Bill Murray's most successful other brother. Boss, I will work for $9 an hour. Please don't fire me. You're fired. Shit, what is below nine? I've never counted backwards. We cut to the nighttime streets and Justin is walking Kelly back from their singing boat trip and they show up at her hotel to say goodnight after a long day of whipped cream bikini contest and misogyny and fighting and food truck hot sauce disasters and all the boat singing and Kelly Clarkson gives them a handshake and not a goodnight kiss. So then later that evening we cut over to the Margarita Madness Party where Alexa rushes to the front of the line and she sees little old Brandon it's me little old Alexa Why why don't you let me little old in for little old free then maybe later tonight i'll little old suck your little old dick oh, yo babe that sounds great go on in and she rushes into the party and immediately a waitress dumps three strawberry margaritas on her head and everyone in the bar points and laughs at her like it is a middle school cafeteria well the children were right, right to laugh at her for one thing um also i think they call this the uh sweet carry i could see that when daiquiris are dumped on your head strawberry daiquiris are dumped on your head it's very 
very silly and goes nowhere. And I don't know if this recurring gag of her being clumsy is supposed to be a thing because I think this is the last time it's ever referenced. Was it referenced before this? Yeah, because she falls when she gets the wristbands oh, okay. and tries to take off with those. It's like, you know, oh, every time she thinks she's getting one over, she like literally trips and falls. Gotcha. But it only happens twice. And as we know, it's not real unless you do it in threes. Maybe it's just her subconscious preventing her from getting blackout drunk again. Yeah, that's going to be a tough fight with her conscious. <laughs> that's pretty determined, Chad. In that heavyweight fight, I'm going conscious just mind every time we cut to the next morning where brandon is bragging to eddie about hey i made a thousand bucks at margarita madness and i met a swedish babe and then bam bam bigelow's younger brother who is also the lead singer for smash mouth shows up to threaten brandon again somebody once told me (laughs) my girlfriend was at a party but the mean old bouncer wouldn't let me in I was feeling kind of bummed because I had too much sun and rejection made me kind of crazy. And then Brandon and Eddie just go, and off they go. I'll tell you, here's the only good thing I will say about this movie is this dude who plays Brandon when he's running from Bam Bam Bigelow slash lead singer of Smash Mouth. Uh He falls and does this somersault recovery. Yeah in the sand where i was like huh i don't think i could do that that's all right and he jettisons his flip-flops when he does it yeah which makes me think this isn't the first time he's done that oh no he has made what i like to call the cuck run more than once i think the way this move works is that you take off running in the flip-flops you stumble and fall and the person pursuing you then slows down because they're like oh i got him he fell that's when he kicks off the flip-flops pops up gains traction and then really kicks it into fourth gear (laughs) right that's a real like like oh it turns out i'm left-handed you know one of those moves he ends up running headlong into some vendor table though yeah and who shows up sexy officer cutler's here boy brad is like hey i'm so glad you're here i was being chased by bam bam bigelow or maybe it was the lead singer at smash mouth and then i hit this table i think i'm gonna have to write you another ticket (laughs) which is what happens Uh that's we're done there oh and then at this point eddie says you know guys i'm just gonna go over here and lay down on the beach get a suntan i'm gonna turn my beautiful alabaster skin into a golden bronze god that's what i'm gonna do guys oh my goodness chad he's oiling up laying on the beach i think you're gonna be happy with the results i'm sure i am our three female leads they're also laying out by the pool alexa's trying to convince kelly clarkson that justin is no good for her and alexa says you know little old justin is probably out hooking up with a different little old skank every little old night he is not your little old time well kelly flips on her is like look you just wouldn't understand because you're a whore and all that sometimes you just meet someone and have a connection that's not something that you would experience being on your back at regular intervals with a bunch of other men kaya jumps in on it uh you know alexa i think she's right because you're a party girl and kelly clarkson won american idol you don't know shit about what kind of guy she likes she likes guys with curly hair and thick fat dongs that's why justin's perfect for her y'all look maybe there's more to lilo me than being a lilo party girl yeah i don't think so i think you're nothing but a nasty whore that's why i won't sleep in the bed next to you because there's bugs jumping off your pussy left and right so alexa (laughs) in a fit of vengeance after being called out for being the town bike uses her phone to, to cancel the beach plans well she changes the beach plans right says don't meet me at the beach meet me at pearl instead of the beach which is a restaurant yeah we cut over to brandon and justin who are hitting the beach at the same time and it's a bunch of bullshit with brandon telling justin like hey you need to be fucking random people i don't know what you're doing with this one girl thing you really need to be fucking a lot of different people you need to be spreading your justin seed around you could be fucking her you could be fucking her you could be fucking him i don't care it's like a junkie seeing their friend clean 
clean up or something. This is like a train spotting move. Trying to drag him back down into the shit. By the way, Brandon has printed up new flyers for another party that they're going to, you know, take over. Yeah, check this out, Justin. It's a dick sucking contest and we're going to be the judges. There's a $10,000 entry fee. The prize is a $50 coupon to Kohl's. I assume we're going to be able to move a lot of ecstasy and cocaine during this party. Yeah, we're going to do everything. Excellent. I'm totally fucked up right now. How many times have I told you not to get high on your own supply? Yeah, I don't know. This is the problem with you, Brandon. I took a mescaline enema. You know what Sarkuchi said? Mm -hmm. I love coochie. <laughs> In fact, everybody calls me Sir Coochie. If he catches you skimming one more time, it's the fishes for you. I'm not playing. I don't live in past 23 anyway. <laughs> so while Brandon is self-destructing here, clearly. <laughs> also, it turns out that he, in his haste to get these flyers printed, they say that it's $10 for all the, the hot ladies to get in and it's free for the guys. Yeah, that ain't no mistake. I'm trying to get our rent back at the hotel 100% comp. I need sexy guys to go back to the hotel room. Take a little rubber dub with me, the brand man. The manager said I get an extra $10 for every guy that is not not staying in the room that shows up on the cameras okay i figure we can clear 14 15 grand easy with the kind of sausage that's running around down here justin i look I w i'm gonna let you in on this all right this guy is ripping off the girls gone wild guy and his is called guys gone wild and it's just guys doing guy stuff and he's gonna pay us a lot of money and he gives us more cocaine that we can go sell i love this town pennsylvania's for assholes look i gotta tell you he was telling me some really good information like first you get the money then you get the power <laughs> then justin you get the women have you played grand theft auto vice city it's like that come to life that's what i'm living in next time i tell a girl say hello to my little friend it'll be a gun not my dick so the sun goes down chad oh yeah and eddie wakes up on the beach and we get this point of view shot where he's walking around <laughs> like oh look oh look at all the babes checking me out worse. hey ladies how do you like this tan this is so poorly executed where he gets sunburned but he never goes through the pain of being sunburned like immediately you see him just sort of peeling off his skin and then that's just tossed to the side the whole gag even that he is fully sunburned on the front half of him and completely pale on the other half isn't really shown very well in a movie that is full of poor execution it's one of the most poorly executed gags in the movie they did this better when police academy went to miami yes when i tan chad i put the little playboy bunny thing nice on my belly uh -huh. so that it's pale you know you can really see it as i start to tan uh, -huh. uh that's always been something that's been a bit of a trademark for me. Yeah. I had a friend of mine who worked at a tanning booth place in college. And when I would go visit her, I remember seeing the Playboy Bunny stickers that you could put on your body to really highlight your tan. And even then, uh -huh. I was like, this is classy. A little classy. Exactly. <laughs> When you look at it, you think to yourself, this is nice. This is something elegant. This is something maybe I could take my mother to. <laughs> So we cut over to the Pearl Bar and Alexa's there and she's drinking and another musical number breaks out that doesn't matter at all. It's a real poor man's material girl. If I may, Chad, sure. this is one of my problems overall with, with this character that ought to have been kind of trashy fun in this movie is there's this kind of underlying sense that she's trying to better herself somehow or she contains multitudes, you know, she's not just the slut that everyone thinks she is, but at no point is she anything other than the slut that anyone thinks she is no 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 she's a one-dimensional character but it's a one-dimensional character complaining about being a one-dimensional character and it's not like this is some rod serling teleplay <laughs> that is you know it turns out oh they were all characters in search of meaning at the end of it it's just a girl playing with a bunch of dolls if only chad <laughs> if only what a wonderful piece of fiction and look at what we're talking about justin shows up 
up at the bar and Alexa says, well, if it isn't little old Justin, did I tell you that little old Kelly had to stop off at the little old VD clinic? She's got all of the herps and a couple of palsies. You definitely don't want a bunch of that little old nonsense. And then we head back over to the beach where Kelly Clarkson and Kaya are waiting for Justin who doesn't show up. And then we return to the boys hotel room where Eddie is peeling off his burnt skin when there is a knock at the door and our D or E plot shows up. I think I think we're at an E plot now. This is E plot. All right. This guy who looks like he's about 40 years old comes in. It's a 40 year old meathead muscle guy. Yeah, but not too muscly, like a fit dad. Yeah, right, but his face is real thin, but there's a lot of, like, corded muscle and veins. He's more rugged than your average dad, but, like, a super obsessed dad. You're right. He comes in, and he thinks that somebody in the room has been having sex with his girlfriend. Does he think Eddie's been having sex with her, Brandon? He thinks Eddie is Brandon. Okay. And that Brandon, for sure, had sex with his girlfriend, Inga. Okay. And that's the Swedish girl that Brandon was bragging about. Oh, like, I didn't even connect those dots. Yeah. Brandon absolutely fucked his girlfriend. This guy has been cuckolded. He shows up at the door, thinks that Eddie is Brandon. I don't understand why. That's never made clear. Also unclear why Eddie isn't just like, hey, man, that ain't me. Because that would end this scene. But instead, Eddie is like, hey, hey, you got to calm down. Why don't we go downstairs and get a drink at the bar? And the guy agrees to do that. And before they leave, Eddie asks the guy, this isn't going to go anywhere past friendship, is it? Does Eddie think this dude wants to fuck him? Maybe. I'll bet that motel owner got excited for a moment. Turn on the cameras. Hit record. We're about to see a little bit of rough stuff. <laughs> you don't get this too very often. You know what? Even money that the little guy is the top. <laughs> back at the pearl alexa is coming onto justin pretty heavy she's all but wearing a sign around her neck with an illuminated arrow pointing at her vagina that says first come first serve and justin just looks at her and he's like look alexa you're beautiful and all and i realize that i could do the kind of things to you that a slutty hot chick like you lets a guy like me do to a girl like you during spring break in miami but you know what gosh darn it you didn't win american idol and so Alexa just dials things up. Ghost nuclear. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, I hate to little old tell you this, but little old Kelly, she's got a little old boyfriend back in her little old hometown. Justin is kind of upset that Kelly Clarkson has a boyfriend and he's like, boyfriend? Why, we have two, maybe three more days here in the same town. You think she would mention something like that to me? Alexa says she does this all the little old time. She does this to a bunch of guys. Oh, really? She's had these types of relationships with other young suitors like myself? Oh, and this is Alexa clearly projecting where she just accuses Kelly of everything that she's ever done. Oh, yeah. She has sex all the little old time in the back of little old cars and little old bathroom stalls. It all little old started with her little old uncle when she was little old eight. It's little old tragic. Ever since then, she's been chasing the little old love of a little old authority figure of some kind. I don't know why I'm little old crying so much here. It's just so little old sad when I think about it or when I little old say it out loud because these words have never come out of my little old mouth little old before. Oh, I should have another little old martini that makes it all go away. Luckily, Justin leaves before another song can break out. <laughs> about her uncle. And Eddie, we cut to him and the boyfriend who it turns out his name is Craig and they're at the tiki bar and Craig is talking about how he equates rage and love and all where Eddie uh, is like so would you like do you really love her this girl that you're god I love her about? so much I just want to smash her face in if I couldn't have her I'd just kill her and then me chop up her body into little pieces I would eat as much as what I can and then I'd strap dynamite all over me and blow myself up wow that's like the most passionate thing I've ever heard anyone say say there's a near miss with the cyber babe where craig hugs eddie because of all the good advice he's getting which triggers the sunburns they only mention the sunburn really which forces eddie to bury his head on the bar thus missing the cyber babe who comes looking at the tiki bar for him at just this moment due to sheer happenstance we cut to the next day <laughs> And Brandon is promoting a pool party fiesta with Justin, who really wants to text 
Kelly Clarkson, but Brandon talks him out of it. And, but at that exact moment, Kelly Clarkson and Kaya show up and then another musical number just breaks out Ugh. at this swimming pool party filled with everybody dancing as Kelly Clarkson and her friend sing some forgettable pop song. None of this matters. At one point, Justin gets thrown in the pool, but he gets out and then he just joins in on the singing and dancing. The water is the source of the infection, apparently. The whole thing wraps up. And then at this exact moment, Luke, our bohunk from Texas, he shows up because Alexa has called him on the phone and said look little old you need to drive all little old night all little old long and you need to get one of those crazy female astronaut diapers and just piss your pants until you get here let me give you the little old worst case scenario little old Luke. best case you end up and with little old kelly oh that sounds great i know it does worst case you end up fucking little old me you know for the trouble well i appreciate the offer but i've done done that lots of times i know but you know how it is you know how i can uh, how my hips are double jointed and i can put my little old leg back behind my other little old leg yeah um, i guess so let me go get my truck and i'll be there sometime tomorrow <laughs> that's fine i'm not above a little old begrudging fuck i'll take it how i can get it so he shows up at the swimming pool right as the dance number ends and he kisses kelly on the lips and justin says who is he kelly i thought we had something special and then alexa just pops into the frame and she says that's a little old luke that's his, her little old boyfriend i told you little old about him last night little old justin says boyfriend and kelly clarkson says no he's not my boyfriend and then luke jumps in and says to justin hey why don't we take this outside sideshow bob which one they're already outside which justin to mm. his credit observes and two, in this scene, Justin Gorini, who normally does have very tall, curly hair that does resemble Sideshow Bob's, but in this scene, he's covered in water from having been thrown in the pool, so his hair isn't big and bushy like Sideshow Bob's. It's flat and curly like Kenny G's. The reference doesn't even make sense. To save us from this conundrum, Chad, in comes Brandon with a, whoa, 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 yeah. There's gotta be a fair, but profitable way to solve this problem what solve what problem who gets to win kelly clarkson yeah neither of them are her boyfriend she is equally unattracted to them both but in different ways i have an exciting but highly impractical way to solve this problem pistols at 10 paces no 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 i got something better something classy it's not that dick sucking contest you were talking about is it nope that's later but Keep that in the back of your head. I wouldn't get too tired. <laughs> Here is his cockamamie plan. The two of them oh are in hovercrafts, <laughs> but they're not <laughs> they're not racing hovercrafts, Shad. No. What the game is, is they take the hovercrafts out on the water. They both have old school giant ass coffee cans in the back of their hovercrafts and then a bunch of bean bags so they're gonna cruise by one another and try to throw these bean bags in the cans and meanwhile brandon is gonna take bets on all this and that's how he's gonna make a little cheddar on the whole situation this is like double dare spring break edition like it's so <laughs> complicated and stupid the fact that there is not gack involved is highly surprising yes so they start this stupid contest and they make i think one successful pass to one another yes then justin just crashes into luke injuring him so badly that he like flies out of his hovercraft and busts his head on the ground and has to go to the hospital yes all that's correct they pull off his helmet he's bleeding as they're taking away the first real injury of the film officer sexy cutler arrives and is like oh were you doing some illegal hovercraft gambling <laughs> <laughs> oh you got me how much do i gotta pay now so he hands over all the money and right. she's just pocketing it along with all the drugs that she's confiscating on the beach we're at the hospital beach patrol hq is what's on the sign chad luke comes out and kelly clarkson says you know luke i sure am glad you're not dead but i'm not ever gonna have sex with you you need to go back to texas now now get 
Remember, you're on probation. And he says, oh, gosh, and then just takes off, and he's done. Yeah, thanks for stopping by the movie again. See you next movie, maybe. Cut to a Latin restaurant where Carlos has luckily found a new job bussing tables, and Kaya shows up, and she says, I heard you got a new job here. Yes, I am making $5 and... 25 cents an hour, scraping beans off of plates and putting ice in the urinals. I am living the American dream. That is sarcasm, in case you cannot tell through my sexy Latin accent. By the way, do not order a glass of iced tea here. It has got piss in it. The summation of everything he says to her is, how about you quit fucking with my life and my job? How about that? Would that be okay? I have two ex-wives and multiple children to support. I need you to leave me be. I can recall literally nothing that I have done to garner this kind of curse that you visit upon me, where you chase me from job to job. Have you spoken to my boss here? Do I need to talk to him? Why are you doing this to me? So we come back to Brandon and he's now hustling again to get people to visit his last big party of spring break. Right. The end of movie party. Yes. Over at the Tiki bar, Justin's all sad. Alexis shows up and she says, Hey there, Justin. Listen, I know you haven't gotten little old laid little old once since you've been here on little old spring break. Let's say you and I go out little old back beside the little old dumpster and you and little old me can get it little old on. And Justin says, no, thank you. I want to win Kelly back. I've got one more day here in florida before i go back to pennsylvania you know i'm part of a posse from that state and then alexa leans in and kisses justin and wouldn't you know it Bo? at this exact same moment kelly clarkson walks by the tiki bar Mm -hmm. and sees these two smooching just the worst of luck for gosh don don (laughs) and she leaves before she can see justin push alexa off back off i'm not that kind of man as he leaves alexa shouts after him what does Lilo kelly have that i don't Lilo have and i'm like i don't know uterus scars a loyalty card over at the abortion clinic yeah she's got the punch card you know <laughs> so the 10th one is free <laughs> So, (laughs) Kaya is in the hotel room. She's all dressed up with no place to go. She's totally bummed. And then, wouldn't you know it, there's a knock on the door, and Carlos shows up, and he says, You know, I thought about it. It turns out you were right about everything all along. I am a helpless person. You have completely turned my life around. I could have never stood up for myself if not for you. I need to also let you know something. I am not really a lowly busboy. I work in the restaurants and we launder money for drug dealers. And that drug dealer is me. Why don't we go out for a delicious eight-course meal and later tonight you can watch me murder not one, not two, but three of my enemies. There is a real patronizing, you know you don't have to do anything to impress me from Kaya here. Mm -hmm. You know what? Just let him do his thing. You don't have to make him feel bad about being poor yet again. Guys, shit poor. You already got him fired from a job. You know, how about you cut him a little bit of a break? If he wants to show you a good time on your last night of spring break, let the guy show you a good time. He takes her over to the swimming pool that has a table set up in this very shallow water. It's like maybe a couple inches deep. And there's a waiter standing nearby. I guess it looks romantic. It's got to cost Carlos like a month's salary. It's probably somebody he knows works on the staff there. He drugged the table and the chairs out in the water earlier. He, He froze the pool and it's slowly melting beneath him yes alexa approaches kelly clarkson on the beach at night and kelly clarkson says look missy i got a bone to pick with you i saw you kissing justin at the tiki bar and why did you tell luke to come down here you know he can't cross state lines he's got an ankle monitor he's gonna go back to the clink now and alexa says i invited little old luke because i thought you were getting in too deep with little old justin and well you know that little old justin called little old me and he said he wanted to get little old me pregnant and have little old 18 babies and not to tell little old you but i little old told him that you and our little old best friend and then he little old kissed me and i'm little old sorry and kelly is like oh my god but she's skeptical or at least that's what i think they hug and make up but neither of them mean it it's like this conniving bitch it's tough to tell with kelly clarkson because i can't tell if she's truly skeptical or again it's just the emotion not not reaching her eyes i think it's the latter it's not the former yeah so cut over to eddie he's in some random bar just stalking the bar for his cyber babe by randomly asking women are you from the internet 
Are you that woman from the internet? Excuse me. Are you that woman from the internet? That's the creepiest pickup line in the year 2003. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Are you, are you that woman from the internet? Do you mean seven of nine? No. Are you that? Do you mean Buffy the Vampire Slayer? No. Are you that? Are you, Do you mean Tia Carrer from Relic Hunter? No. Are you that woman from the internet? That may be one of the most terrifying things for a woman to hear sitting at a bar. Just to have this creep with a terrible sunburn get up in your ear and just whisper, Are you that woman from the internet? I'm going to die. This is it. This is how it ends. Justin walks into this bar. He's looking for Kelly. Yeah, of course he is. <laughs> That's all he does in this movie is wander around looking for her. <laughs> yeah. And he sees Kelly dancing with some dude. She sees him and just immediately breaks off with the dude she's dancing with and heads out of the club. Justin chases her outside. This is where her performance totally bottoms out. Okay. Because it, requir- it requires her to be emotional and upset. And it's like somebody just flicks some water on her cheeks for the tears <laughs> yeah she, she has the worst upset voice i can't believe you did this i can't believe you alexa told me everything how you were gonna get her pregnant behind a dumpster of a tiki bar and how you used me to get to her and and that part about how you in your plan you took me out on the boat because you well that part wasn't really ever talked about when she explained everything to me and it doesn't really fit into the narrative but you know what you're just a jerk I don't understand what's going on. Wait a second. You know, you've been running hot and cold this entire week. You've been treating all of this like a game, Kelly. And to that, I say, no. game over. <laughs> and so Justin leaves the movie for a while. Yes. And then Kelly goes back to the club <laughs> where... <laughs> he dumped me we weren't even boyfriend and girlfriend we i don't think even went on an official date so while she's ugly crying (laughs) alexa is is like i'll tell you what let's get out of here and we'll go back to the lillo hotel and maybe go to another lillo party or something and as they're plotting this, her phone falls. Katunk, katunk. And Kelly scoops it up qu- quick, like just yoink, and just starts reading your text messages. Yes, immediately goes to the messages. Like click, 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 and click. they're what the? F- <laughs> God, I can't. But these are all signed with mine. What is going on here? It is the most red-handed catch of all time. I guess to her credit, Alexa does not deny anything, but immediately goes into you. I've been Lilo jealous of you, and I just thought if I could get Lilo just into like Lilo me, that maybe I could be good as Lilo you. Do you, Lilo, believe any of this, Lilo? <laughs> as soon as she says, like, I wanted to be good like you, uh-huh. even Kai is like, fuck no dare to dream i guess alexa Mm -hmm. but you're what we call in the business a whore that's all you'll ever be in this circle of friends you can never change your role you are fixed in this position enjoy kelly storms off kai and alexa give chase and then carlos who has been hanging out with him he shows up at the bar which got which in his hands like 50 bucks worth of drinks to find all the women (laughs) that he was once with have now left so what did i miss i just went to get drinks for everyone you know i don't make much money do (laughs) i have to pay for all of these is excuse me barkeep if i bust all of the tables will you somehow make my tab disappear no shit what if i just pay you back in song oh (laughs) i was tricked by the white girl we are then given yet another musical number that doesn't matter at all and kelly clarkson she's walking down the boardwalk at night singing about baby i love you and i can't reach your heart or something about facing the world then justin shows up and he kind of sings along and he says he's like so uh do you come here often and kelly says well i thought you were heading to the airport what stopped you 
And then Alexa just pops her head into the frame of the movie and she says, well, it was little old me, Kelly. I called Justin and I little old told him that I was just little old fucking with both of little old you over the last little old six days. You know what? You two little old belong together. So you know what? Why don't you two just little old go and fall in little old love? And then Kelly and Justin start singing to each other about how they're the ones they've been searching for. And it's really difficult to watch these two sing together and fall in love because it is absent of any chemistry whatsoever. There is no romance in in this romantic scene. I also dearly, dearly love that Alexa here, as she is revealing her plan and essentially exiting the movie, right. she says, y'all, as I try to keep little y'all apart you just kept finding little ways to get back together and i'm the queen of conniving dude the fact that she has just assumed this moniker now Mm -hmm. i'm just gonna be the worst friend that anyone ever had (laughs) that's just me from now on the fact that she accepts this villainous role that she needs ain't i a little old stinker (laughs) right it's just such a shrug of "Hmm, i guess i'm always just gonna be the worst person anyone knows finally justin and kelly kiss after they sing at each other for a little while longer and then it's the next day it's the day that we're leaving miami leaving spring break and wouldn't you know it at the last minute there's this big party that brandon has thrown together that's happening fortuitously around the hotel they wrap up all of the b plots and c plots and d plots and e plots eddie the nerd he finds the 40 year old guy who broke up with his girlfriend and he's doing okay then eddie finally meets up with the curly headed internet girl he's been looking for and they kiss the beach police officer the sexy one shows up but she's dressed in normal sexy clothes and she and brandon go off to go fuck behind a dumpster yeah it's a real cuckoo cuckoo mrs robinson thing happening but the actress who plays this cop is like what 28 27 yeah and the actor playing brandon is 26 or 25 <laughs> yeah i mean it's, it's not out of the bounds of reason or anything but there's a real like hey oh i hope you didn't forget the handcuffs i can't feel anything unless it's weird carlos and kaya they decide that they're gonna go and really party it up in miami which means they're about to get ears deep in cocaine and then everyone in the cast including justin and kelly they all start dancing to this terrible remix of that's the way i like it it goes on forever there's a rap break from brandon in this one and then eddie takes over to rap for a second it is an affront to god and man chad and 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 it just it eventually just ends when the credits roll thank god one thing that's interesting to me is throughout this movie everyone keeps talking about parties and going to party and we're gonna do some partying and it's just such a different thing than my understanding of what partying is no better or worse just a different lifestyle where when i was a kid when you and i were growing up if somebody said i'm gonna go party it meant i'm just gonna go get fucked up there was no choreography (laughs) no i'm not gonna go sing and dance and even keeping within the realm of reason it also was never i'm gonna go to the club and dance It was just, I'm going to go get fucked up. Yeah, I think that's what most people think. When you say like, hey man, you want to go party? No one's thinking you're going dancing. Like, I'm sure that exists and that's a a whole different culture and and whatnot, but it's the whole time everybody in this movie was like, hey, are we going to go party? I heard there's a party. Let's go party. And it usually involved driving out into the middle of a field where there was a fire that had been set and people were just like, yeah, just smoke this. What is it? Just smoke it. Like, Oh, shit. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, my uncle grows it. Yeah. What he does is he hangs old paint cans from trees so the cops can't find it. And when it's ready for sale, he hangs a milk jug out on the front of his mailbox. He paints it purple. Basically the way that Woodward would let Deep Throat know <laughs> that uh, he, he, he had run into a wall. That's where uh, my uncle got it. He he saw all the presents meant a bunch, and uh, but he, he he doesn't remember that. So that's when Justin met Kelly. Uh, a whole bunch of nothing happened apparently, and it's it's not a very good movie at all. So if you haven't watched it, please don't. Hopefully we've you know steered you in the right direction. Speaking of going in the right direction, let's talk about going in the wrong direction, Bo. What will be the season finale of? this season's theme of flop is born bo 
What do you got? Look, Chad, when we talk about finales, Uh you want to save the best for last. Yes. Speaking of musicals, an unabashed musical is headed our way. I know how much you hate musicals. It's got superstars Uh like the Bee Gees. What? Steve Martin. Huh? Aerosmith. Donald Pleasance. George Burns. I mean, with a cast like that, it's got to be a Cannonball Run movie, right? That's the only thing it could be. Instead, it is the big screen adaptation of the seminal Beatles record, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, featuring no Beatles or actual performances of, uh, of most of that music. This is a movie. Yeah, it really is. That was in theaters. Yeah. And people paid to go see this. Well, not many, but some. <laughs> Spoilers for the intro, it didn't do well. <laughs> but if the the notion of Peter Frampton playing a character named Billy Shears uh-huh. and romancing a young lady named Penny Lane, Ooh. I think you may see where this is going. I to. do. Then I think you're going to find this to be really just Awful. Uh, just, just terrible. Yeah. Clearly, I've never seen this. I've seen it eh, probably 30 times. Good Lord. All right. Well, you know what? I will watch it within two weeks' time to be ready to go for the the season finale. So, as always, like, rate, review. You can send us an email at picksixmovies at gmail.com. Tell all your friends and family and the people that you know who might love this show about the fantastic work that we unapologetically do over here all for free all for you Bo. as always any final thoughts on the american idol movie when justin met kelly what if it was called when justin was on kelly when justin stalked kelly that's better and justin saw kelly that's accurate at least <laughs> that would have been much more accurate or just parties whores and cocaine colon but no fucking Right, and also you don't see the cocaine, but you totally know everyone's doing cocaine. It's a long subtitle, but it's going to be hard to fit on the marquee. Yeah, yeah, people will figure it out, you know? Hey, if Kubrick could do it, so can we. (laughs) All right. Everyone, we will see you in two weeks' time. Thank you for listening.